<laughs> yeah, hi, uh, Frankie Davis, RMS. Um, Argentina, through uh, rugby championship, we played against them many, many times, so we both know them very well. Uh, there were two losses in the last three years. How does that set you up for this game? What have you seen from Argentina? What do you expect from them uh, on Friday? Oh, I think the pass sets us up beautifully for both teams. You know, we've, um, as you said, we, we do know each other, but we, we don't know each other in terms of a, a Rugby World Cup. So from that sense, it's uh, at this stage of a tournament, it's new territory for us. Um, and, and as we've already seen, Rugby World Cups are very, very different. But all that we've learnt is we've learned to greatly respect Argentina and, and what plan for what you know for them plan for their country it clearly means a lot though perhaps an underrated team worldwide that has got a has got a really rich history of perhaps overachieving at World Cups and done a fantastic job to get here at the same level we are so um, it's going to be a heck of a game. Ian, the decision to, to bring Mark back into the starting lineup is that a reflection of what you've seen from him or what you haven't seen from Leicester? Oh, no, it's just what the, the, that's the team we think's best for this week. Mark's um, he's done his time, and like I said at the time, it's um, you know, he, he'd made a mistake, he, he accepted what, what was happening, and but you don't linger in that space and. He's been a you know, form winger through this tournament for us, and we really got a lot of faith in him and believe he's in a good place to, to play this game. We, I really enjoyed Leicester's game, and I thought he did a lot of what we asked him to do last week, and he should be proud of that, and it's a tough selection. But um, just think it's a chance for us to get Mark back on the park, and um, I know he's excited. Sorry, we'll go to come back to you, Ollie. Um, we'll go to Martin Goodwin. Right. Question for um, for both of you. Um, there's a bit of a sign and dance made in the Irish media post that match about Rico making an air cup gesture towards the fans. Now, I think most normal people would realise that that's just a bit of sporting banter. Um, but I wondered whether or not you have any policy about that, both of you, whether or not you, you think that you know, the players should be doing this or whether you tell them whether they should or shouldn't be doing this or whether you think it is just a bit of natural crowd give it a bit of that and, and if say we can't hear you singing anymore look it's um it, it happens on a, on a rugby park it happens on most sporting parks when tensions are high um, there's a lot at stake and players from both both teams and all teams are you know occasionally want to say a few words to each other and that's the nature of the game and you know, and unfortunately recently it's also included players saying a few things to referees. So it's, is, is it right for the game? Don't know. It's always been there. You've got to, it's, it's highly competitive and, um, and you don't hear a lot of players complaining about it. Dan? Oh, sorry, Jeez. mate. Yeah, I think it's also a little bit of, um, you know, different players and different people's uh, personalities and emotions coming out in those moments. So, um, yeah, look, I don't, it, when you're out there, I think it doesn't matter sometimes what level of sport, there's always people who have different tactics and their emotions uh, can run high. And um, as I said, but um, it's often, it's always just left out there. Okay, um, yeah. Um, firstly, uh, you've never heard us say we're favourites, so that's your language, if, if that is indeed your language. Um, we're, we're in a World Cup semi-final. We know that these games are, are do or die, they're finals, and whoever's got to this stage has done that because they've, 
they've beat some really good teams and played really, really well, and that's how we're treating this game. And so we know we're going to have to be... Um, we, we're going to have to improve our performance because the stage gets bigger and bigger at this time of the tournament, and you've got to grow your game. And that's our strong focus. And the fact is is that we, we know that... We said it before the Irish game, and is that it's the best team on the night that wins it. And we know Argentina has done that to us. So, look, we, we don't, we're not buying into anything about favouritism or underdogs or whatever it is. It doesn't make any difference to us. We, we know we have to perform at our best, and that's the only way we're approaching this game. Yeah, I probably don't really have too much to add to that. Okay, we'll that's the first time he's listened to me for a while. Okay, sorry, could you just introduce yourself? Sure. I'm not sure I understand the question. Sorry. I'm not sure I understand the question fully. In terms of the quality that maybe you want to see in the team and you represent yourself as a player that you need to see now in the team. Yeah, right. Uh, look, I thought we'd, we took a, a massive step up in the weekend. There was a heck of a lot that went into that game. Um, but we're at a, a crunch time in the tournament now where what we delivered last week uh, may not be good enough this week so our drive is to pair as deep as and as well as we did last week so that we can go out and, and put in a better performance and that's personally and as a team so um, that's been the focus this week is to whatever we did last week we us try and do a little bit better this week okay we'll go over here yeah james of course guy obviously <laughs> talks about the world cup teams playing their final earlier than the final you guys have to go deep we had to play a final last week to be fair I think what you're seeing now and you know with with the, with the teams that are in the, the top eight teams in this tournament is every game was like that wasn't it it was a fantastic weekend for every game every team got pushed to the edge and and so it's probably a reflection of, of where world rugby's at now that you actually have to go you have to go bone deep in everything you do now just to get to where you get to where we've got. So it's not a matter of trying to hold anything back. It's a matter of actually just treasuring the moment and treasuring each week. And and the beautiful thing about this is that you, you've just got to go, you've got to give it everything every week and there's just no tomorrow on it. And that's how we approached last week. It's how we're going to approach this week. Um, very simple formula. and And not worry about... Well, can we do what we did last week? Well, that's different. I mean, Argentina are a very, very different team. And, and you know, they, they play a different way. They, um, and we've got massive respect for them. We know the breakdown is going to be exactly the, the sort of battle that we had against them the last two or three years. That's tough. They've got some backs that really want to play and open you up. And we've just got to be at our best. And so we just like to keep things really simple, not worrying about can we do it again, but just can we do... Can we meet this challenge this week the way at the standards we want to? And that's our approach. Okay, we'll go to James McHoney, back there. Um, Fozzie, just over here. Hey, just well, what are the reasons behind the, the other changes you've made to the team? And um, were you tempted to tinker a bit more with the side? Uh, look, selection's always tough. And you in the balance of continuity, combinations, and at this stage of the tournament, you know, where, there, where there's kind of no tomorrow. And so uh, for us, um, we've basically effectively trusted the combinations we had, had last week. We've, we've switched, obviously, Sam and, and Brody around. I, I think we've got, we've said it, we're, we, we've got a lot of faith in all four of our locks, but particularly those three, you know, are very, very experienced. And we just feel that... Um, Having Sam start, bring up a little bit of extra energy into that pack early. You've got Brody coming off the bench. Um, Sam Asoni in for Colsey is a very similar story. You know, I think that um, got a lot of faith in all three of our hookers. I thought Colsey did a great job but with, you know, holding holding the composure of the team in the last part. Sonny's going to, you know, he's got a lot of pent-up energy and he's ready to go. So we're just using a little bit of the energy of the squad at this stage because we feel we can without compromising the group and like I said earlier Mark's 
proven himself for us this tournament, and we believe it's right to put him in. So get the changes to a minimum, but I think they're, they're important. Okay, we'll go just to you, sir. Okay, um, Joe, Twitter. Hey Sam, so what gives you confidence the team has come down from the high line and is reasonably focused for this week? Well, look, we probably won't know for sure until we uh, get to the game, to be honest. Uh, but look, we there, there's plenty of us who have that hurt and some scars from 2019, and uh, I think Colsey spoke to you guys earlier in the week, and we had that chat as a group. Lot there's two very different. Mondays we can turn up for next week and, and one of them is horrible so um, and some of us have experienced that so we know that the game just being in the weekend is no indication of how we're going to play the following week like it's going to come down to the work we put in and the, the ability for us to turn up mentally right on edge and, and be better than before so um, you know we're, we're extremely driven to do that uh, and we're excited by the challenge. It's, it's, um, we feel we're in a good spot, but um, we've got to go again. Okay, down the front here. Uh, Adnan, Mohamed, Gallo. Just, um, you guys play Argentina, South Africa, and Australia in the rugby championship. Um, we were rugby pundits in South Africa. I know we play Argentina this week. Is South Africa play for inside of rugby? Just, uh, I would just like your thoughts on that. About South Africa playing boring type of rugby. So I'm, I'm, well, I don't believe that. Okay, Sad, the back so, here, number seven. Uh, are we clear with that? I just want to make sure I'm not. Can, can you expand on that? Because, yeah, what, what do you think of this part? Look how many points they scored. <laughs> well, they're playing brilliant rugby. So, but again, that's another conversation right now. So, I'm a, like I said, it's um, without being rude. Oh, I'm thinking about Argentina. So. Okay, Sam, back there. Ian, what's the most important thing the guys have to do to recover this week after that game last weekend? Oh look, recoveries, there's a, there's a number of things you've got to recover physically and, and that's always critical at this time of year. Um, it's the mental recovery, so how you switch off and, and, and come down from that high. But it's, well, I think the best way to recover is to refocus really quickly on what the next challenge is and um, not to listen too much to any, any praises you're getting as a group for a performance, not, not to go down that path, not to get sort of softened because you, everyone's patting you on the back saying you played well and it's not a good place to be as a team and um, so I, I, bet, I love the way the team's just sort of buckled down, we, we've redefined the challenge for us as a group, we're not satisfied with where we're at now and and when you're clear about your goal for the week it actually, the, the, the recovery comes along pretty quickly because you know that you know if we're not right at Friday on Friday night at, at Star de France then going to be a sad old night and um, we don't want it to be like that so we've worked hard you know we've we've got amazing support from our country behind us and it's been phenomenal the, the amount of messages and everything that's gone on behind the scenes we know we're playing for for a country and a fan base and and um, we want to do them proud so we, we're really clear and we know there's no excuses on Friday night for lack of recovery it's all about treating this occasion with the respect that it, that it deserves. Okay, we'll go to Mark Hinton and then Liam. Yeah, Ian, you've been part of two World Cup semi-finals and they've both been really tough affairs. You won one and you lost one. Is there a particular dynamic around a semi-final? And in your experience, what is that? And, um, you know, what makes them such tough games? Uh... Well, the best dynamic is winning. There's no doubt about that. Um, look, it's 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 tense. Simply, well, I think it's at a basic level, Mark. It's tense because of the the quality of the opposition. <clears throat> You're at a stage that, regardless of rankings, forms before a tournament, the teams that are here are the teams that have have run their campaign and run their time to peak at this point. And and I think you've seen that. So. Um, 
and we've seen that in Argentina. You know, they've been under the radar a little bit, and but boy, they've they've played some good rugby, and they showed a lot of tenacity. I thought last week against Wales under a bit of scoreboard pressure and came back and played well. So, yeah, yeah. First and foremost, the the it's easy to get focused because of who you're playing, and and I guess the second thing is just the enormity of it. You know, you 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 know that there, there's a bit at stake. You 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 get people talking to you about tomorrow and trying to take your eyes off today and it's probably as simple as that the challenges and and like i said you know i've been to been to one 20, 2015 where you've you basically your your op- opposition probably couldn't be bigger in our eyes and then in 2019 we probably didn't stop being patted on the back enough after the quarter final hence some of my language today and we're just trying to Redial this back, keep things simple, and um, let's just worry about Friday. Okay, Liam, and then we've got time for one more. Uh, Sam, uh, Ian touched on the breakdown. I know that was obviously a big thing for Texas. Um, last week itself, and Adi and Brody and others set the tone there. How, how do you get to talk to whether Plumers will come out here as well? How do you go about trying to replicate um, the success you had in the following year? Yeah, I suppose the breakdown's two sides of the ball, isn't it? It's just us when we've got the ball attacking, um, and obviously the other side when we're defending. Um, you know, we had some guys making some, some brilliant tackles, getting guys to the ground early, um, allowing some of us to, to get on the ball. But I think, like put it simply, rugby's off just a game of often. There's a lot of little parts, but the biggest one is just winning collisions. And when you're on the front foot. Um, and winning those collisions, it makes things um, that much easier. So, look, we've got a, a full pack from, from one to eight that can carry the ball really well. Um, and we've just been working hard on sort of defining that area for us and making it a real strength. And, uh, you yeah, know, our challenge is to go out there and, and back it up again because it's an area that we, we certainly pride ourselves on these days.